Japan is a very vibrant community. It's a great old community spirit here since after the War of Independence and the Civil War. Didn't leave any legacy much at all here. Um, apart from the usual Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael sort of political stuff, which is harmless enough. And the community always worked together. Built the community hall in 1943, 44, and opened it in 45. And after that, then the community council was formed in 73. There was a Guild of Winter Material here before that. Community council formed in 1973. And we built in 1986. We opened the huge sports complex we have over there. About 10 or 11 years ago, then we, all, we built a sheltered housing, 20 houses for um, folks who are retired and things like that, just next to the church and a social and daycare centre there, so that's, that's thriving as well. I lived in the city originally, you know, so I came down here to live and it was the best move I ever made. It's like heaven on earth, you know. We are, I live in one of the houses here and um, we're so cosy in them and everybody look after each other, even though we still have our privacy. And Michael and Mary in the centre here are so good to us. Like, we, no matter what we need, or they're always there for us, you know. And even when I came here first, when I knew nobody, I was living above with my daughter that morning, and I was bringing her little girl to school. And the first week I was down here, I was walking the road, and there were so many people. Each time there'd be a different person stopping the car to give me a lift home, you know. And I just couldn't how people would, everybody would be saluting you and saying good morning. Whereas in the city you don't get that because there's too many people. Nineteen seventy-seven, um, a factory was built over here called Connabride Developments, Connabride Plastics. It produced cigars for a while even, but it's mainly producing plastics now. A Dutch man came to live around here many years ago, a man by the name of Robert Kornberg, and he built the factory and opened it, and it's provided good employment here continuously over the past 36 or 7 years. Um, some people had to, in the village have been working there for all of that time. We left with a shop and a post office and two pubs, and we don't want to lose any one of those four businesses because um, we think a public house is the lifeblood of the village where people can come together and it's better to have two that people can come and go and things like that so we'd hate to be reduced to one of those either and the shop, Tom English's shop, it's fairly well supported. Anthony Hurumley is my name. And how long are you here Anthony? I'm here about 40 years I suppose. 40 years. And did you work here? Not around here. Not a, I did in the factory over here for the, for, um, for the, the cigar factory. Oh yeah, and you have a family I here. I did the, the picture frames here then as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did the picture frames in Canada. Yeah. Rural Ireland is struggling in the sense that uh, we have less people working in the country, like right? less farmers and less uh, all commuting and as regards the pub business, it's uh, probably pub business and shop business would be very, very weak now in rural Ireland. It tends to be big supermarkets, could sell it cheaper than I'd be able to buy it. Fight an uphill battle in that sense. But uh, as long as I'm here, I'll keep at it and let the next man or her next woman. I've enjoyed my time here nearly, and uh, 
it's a uh, rural Ireland is that's the one thing in rural Ireland we're we're lacking of what would you say um the big the big supermarkets have blown us out of the water and they probably blew the small farmers out of the water, the big farmers probably blew the small farmers out of the water and that's tends to be the way and probably suits the big strong drummers, it suits the banks and suits us Hopefully our post office will keep going because that's under stress too. And they take all the business away and make it online and all this. But we might fight back in a different way in time. Our young people are they're very resilient and they're, they keep our place going really. And that's about it. wonderful life here and when I go to the city on the bus it's beautiful because you feel you're going on a holiday each time you visit because the scenery and everything is so beautiful as you're coming along. You have the mountains and the beautiful fields and the, you know all the colours of the trees in autumn time whereas in the city you see nothing only grey built up buildings so every time you go outside you have beauty. You know you see the moon coming through the trees at night, which is a beautiful picture. You see the sundown. Oh my God, the sundown is only beautiful. It's like a ball of fire in the sky. I saw it from the top of um, um, Ballino Hill there. I went for a walk one night and it was unreal. It's something I had never experienced in the city apart from seeing it on television, you know. So um, I am very happy here and everybody living here are very happy as well and as I say we have the centre here and everything is here for us you know and it's just beautiful we have heaven on earth in the parish of Connor not far from for my there lived in my school days a horse called Ben Boy. He was bred not for racing, but drawing a bread van. And that's how the history of the van boy began. At the point a point meeting held by UHC, Clan Mult Bally Legan and old Bartlemy. The van boy he won in the Canterich race. And the papers were full of the races, he said. Now the sportsmen have fallen, are exiled and dead. But the days of the van boy will never be read. There's a new generation who hails him with pride in the honours he brought to the banks of the bride. Oh.